Gosh darn it, the radiator's broke again. What's the problem? I don't know. Today in the garage, we are looking at how we problem solve with ratios, because that is something that Bobby the car mechanic has to do a lot. Come on in and let's look at this radiator together. Welcome to the garage, everybody. This is Bobby. We thank you so much for joining us today in the garage. Today we are taking a look at ratios again, uh, specifically with problem solving the ratios. This is lesson five in our ratio playlist. We hope you'll check out those other lessons. Come on in. Let's look under the hood and see what's going on with ratios today. So it looks like today I will be able to solve word problems using ratios. So we're actually just going to take a look at a couple different problems, four problems that we can use our different tools from our toolbox to solve with ratios. So just like every car mechanic has a toolbox or a tool shelf where they have a lot of different tools to do any different type of job they might see, you have a ratio toolbox filled with tools that you've been learning, putting in there ready to pull out anytime you have a ratio question. So our first one is we know how to find the rate of a ratio. We know how to find the multiplicative relationship within a ratio. We also know how to use scale factors to help us find equivalent ratios. And similar to that, we can use scale factors to find a unit ratio, which then we can use to solve other types of problems. And then also we learned last lesson about a visual model that we call tape diagram to help model and solve ratio problems. So if you're real confused and you just need to look at it, you pull out that tape diagram. So let's dive right in and look at four different problems today where we can use a tool from our ratio toolbox. So this question says a restaurant orders fish and chicken. The ratio of fish to chicken is two to three. I hope it's fried chicken because I love, Bobby loves a fish fry. My county league softball team, when, you know, they call me spark plug. We go, we have a delicious fish fry to celebrate every championship at the end of the year. Whether we win or lose, we call ourselves champions just so we can have a fish fry. So the ratio of fish to chicken is two to three. What is the ratio of the number of fish to the total numbers of items ordered? Okay, so my statement's going to say, the ratio of fish to total is blank, right? And so this is actually a really easy question. If you go all the way back to our first lesson and remember that there are two different types of ratios. There are part to part and part to whole. Okay. And so the this is a part to part model because it's saying the ratio of fish two chicken, right? So for this one, I have two fish for every three pieces of chicken, okay? And so to show this, I'm actually going to draw a quick tape diagram here so you can kind of visually see what I'm talking about. So here I have two fish, right? And they're going to be equal because it's just really equal groups. I have two fish for every three chickens, okay? And so again, these are equal groups. And so when I look at this, again, my ratio, my part to part ratio is two to three because I'm comparing my two parts. If I look total, I have five items, right? So my fish, my ratio of fish to the total is two for every five total, right? So that's my ratio. My ratio of fish to the total is two to five. So this one might be actually a little bit more difficult because it's not just right there for us to see, right? So my question says, how far will the airplane travel in 15 minutes? So I'm going to say the AP, that's what I call airplanes, uh, will travel blank miles in 15 minutes, right? And so I know that it says right here in my word problem that this is a constant speed. Now, speed is actually a unit rate, right? It's a ratio. It is distance over time. You might learn about that in middle school and high school, or if you're already there, you probably already know about it. And so we have 320 miles per hour. That means my unit rate, my unit ratio is 320 miles for every one hour, right? And so I want my answer a minute, so, and so really I'm going to rewrite this, and this is equivalent, right? 320 miles for every 60 minutes, right? And so that's really what that's saying, one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So let me grab a different color. Now, I know that I was looking for 15 minutes, right? So I'm looking for a ratio that's going to have 15 minutes for my minutes, and I'm looking for what is X? 
And so, okay, I set up my equivalent ratios right here. How did I turn 60 into 15, right? Well, I divided it by 4, but remember, we don't say divide by 4. We say multiply by 1 fourth. So if I multiply my scale factor now, I'm using my scale factor tool to help me figure this out. I set up my equivalent ratios, and then I had to find out what scale factor I used. So 320 times uh, 1 fourth is going to be 320 fourths, right? And when I divide that, I'm going to get 80, okay? So I know that x equals 80. So in 15 minutes, I'm going to be able to travel 8, or sorry, 80 miles is my answer right there, right? And so I use my unit ratio, I use my time thing, but really my tool that I used here was my scale factor. I set up my equivalent ratio, and I figured out how did I turn 60 minutes into 15, and that scale factor is used for both up, both quantities, right? So 320 times one-fourth was 80 miles. So the airplane will travel 80 miles in 15 minutes. So this one here actually has a few more steps to it, but if you just use your knowledge and start with the statement and just follow one step at a time, I, you, you'd be able to figure this one out. So if you want to try this one out, go ahead and pause it and try it. But if you want to do it with me, that's okay too, because this is all about just doing problems with ratios and learning different tools and how to use them. And so my statement is going to say, uh, my question is how much more money is Joni saving per pack of candy? So my statement is going to say, Joni, that's a great name. That's a great name, Joni. That's a, that's a lovely name. Joni is uh, saving blank dollars, right, more by purchasing the 10-pack of candy, okay? And so I'm looking for anything about money. So it says Joni can buy a 5-pack of candy, right, for $7.50 or a 10-pack of candy, right, for $12.50. And I guess right here I should have been specific. Joni is saving blank dollars more per pack, right? I'm not just trying to subtract them. I'm trying to figure out per pack. So how much is she saving by purchasing the 10 pack of candy? Okay. So what I'm really doing here is I know that I have a five pack and that's going to cost me some money, right? Um, that's going to cost me something per pack. And I know that's actually going to be more than my 10 pack because my 10 pack is saying I'm, I save money. And so I'm actually doing an additive comparison tape diagram. If you're not a tape di diagram enthusiast, don't worry about this part. We'll get to the ratios, but this is how I would set it up, okay? And so now I, what it's asking me is per pack of candy. That's asking me for the unit rate for every one pack of candy, okay? So I have two different ratios here. I have a five pack, okay, for every $7.50, okay? And then I have a 10 pack. I'll do this one over here, okay? a 10 pack of candy, okay, for every $12.50. So what this is asking me is more per pack. So I need to turn my pack into one. So I'm going to set this up as a equivalent ratio. So I have one pack here, okay, and I, I'm looking for how many dollars that one pack will be. And over here I'm going to do the same thing, okay. So I have my one pack here, and I'm looking again for how many dollars is that going to be. So I'm going to need to find my scale factor for both equivalent fractions. So right here, I know I multiplied by one-fifth was my scale factor, okay? And here, I'm, so I'm here, I'm going to multiply by one-fifth. And just trust me on this, you could work this out, but when I do the scale factor and I use uh, one-fifth times $7.50, that's going to be $1.50. Oops, I'll make that a little bit better. So for my five-pack, I'm paying $1.50 for every one pack, right? So over here, my scale factor obviously is going to be one tenth. So when I multiply this by one tenth for every one pack of candy, I'm paying one dollar and twenty-five cents. Okay, and so for my one pack right here, I'm doing one dollar and twenty-five cents. So I was looking for how much more I saved. So what is this question mark going to be right here? So obviously one dollar and fifty cents minus one dollar and twenty-five cents. I am saving twenty-five cents more per pack by buying the 10 pack of candy. So what I did right here, again, I used my scale factor, I set up my equivalent ratios, and then I used, my, I had to find my scale factor, and then find what my other quantity was using that same scale factor. So here I could say my unit rate is $1.50 per pack, and here I could say my unit rate is $1.25 per pack. Remember, because a rate is when you are comparing your two different quantities, and this is one 
point twenty five or one and twenty five hundredths bigger than one. So this is my unit rate for my ten pack. This is my unit rate for my five pack. And my ten pack saved Joni twenty five cents. So let's take a look at one more. Now this is a garage challenge. I know you saw this car last lesson, but sometimes people bring me cars that look like this, and it is a piece of garbage. But guess what? I take their money. If they want to pay me to fix, I take their money, right? And so this question is asking, what is the total mass of the contents in the basket, right? So the total mass, which again means weight, okay, the total mass is blank kilograms. So this is not just going to be a ratio problem. I'm going to have to use several different things. I'm going to solve this with a tape diagram. If you're not a tape diagram enthusiast, you might have another way you want to solve it. But this is what I call a garage challenge. So it says two-sevenths of a basket is filled with fish, okay? So I know right now, I know what type of tape diagram to draw. The remaining part is filled with beef and chicken, okay? And there's a ratio of 3 to 7 for that beef and chicken. The chicken weighs 20 kilograms more than the beef. What is the total weight of the contents in the basket? So right here, I have this basket right here, okay? Draw this nice, pretty green basket as a tape diagram, okay? And I know my denominator was 7, so I'm going to try to do my best. 1, 2, 3 four, five, and six, which makes my last one seven, so I need to get rid of this piece. And it says right here that these two pieces were fish, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two sevenths of them were fish, and the remaining part is beef and chicken. So this whole part down here, okay, is going to be either beef or chicken. So that's the first part. Now it tells me the ratio of beef to chicken is 3 to 7. So underneath here, I'm going to draw a ratio multiplicative comparison relationship tape diagram. So I have my beef right here, okay, and my beef. And again, I'm making it it's only this big, right? And so my, I'll do my chicken first. That way I know I don't do too big, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 six and seven and then my beef was three because my ratio was three to seven right and these are supposed to be equal so just get, you know give me a little grace these are supposed to be equal i know they're, they don't look equal but then it also tells me that the chicken weighs 20 more kilograms than the beef right and so that means whatever this chicken is it weighs 20 more than the beef so if i do this that means this missing piece right here is 20 kilograms so the beef was 20 kilograms less than the chicken, or you could say the chicken was 20 kilograms more than the beef, right? So this part of my chicken tape diagram is equal to 20. Now, if you remember, we talked about how um, tape diagrams are all about trying to find those equal pieces right here. Well, because my ratio told me three pieces for every seven, I know that there are four extra pieces for the chicken, right? Three here, three here, and then there's four extra pieces. And it says right here on my tape diagram that those four pieces have to be equal to 20. And they're all equal. So if I do 20 divided by 4, that means there are going to be 5 kilograms for each of these. And if each one of these is 5, that means the rest also has to be 5. Okay. Which means I know total between all of this. I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Okay which means from my beef and chicken is going to be equal to 50 kilograms. There we go. Okay. Kind of write that right there. I know I'm kind of running out of room, which means my beef and chicken. So I have one, two, three, four, five pieces of beef and chicken, and that's 50 total, which means if I take my 50 and I divide it into my five equal groups, that will be 10 in each which means each of my other pieces have to be 10. So total in my basket, I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I have 70 kilograms total, okay? So I know I solved that kind of fast. You can always go back and watch it. This is a garage challenge. So this is kind of like where you would be if you were a master of using these tape diagrams with ratios. You might not be here yet and that's okay. You know, Bobby wasn't a car mechanic the whole time. I had to work my way up. First, I started at the reception desk. I was just getting coffee for everybody, right? And now I'm a full-fledged car mechanic. I own my own garage. 
But what happened was, if I can recap it very quickly, I had to set up my fraction model here. I labeled what I knew, two sevenths was fish, the rest was beef and chicken, and then it told me that I had to do a ratio tape diagram to figure out how much I had here. I had three pieces of beef from every seven pieces of chicken, and the chicken weighed 20 more pounds than the beef, which means these four extra pieces was 20 pounds. I divided 20 into four equally, which was five in each group. If these are all equal, that means the rest of them have to be five, which means I counted them all up, which was 50. That means from my beef and chicken had to be 50 kilograms, and I divided that into one, two, three, four, five equal groups, because it said the rest of my two sevens was beef and chicken. If these were all 10, these pieces had to be 10. I had seven groups of 10, which was 70. Now, I know Bobby talks a lot. Again, that might be confusing. Don't worry about it. This is where you're going to get when you're a master. So it's okay. Hopefully, you can do the other ones, and hopefully, you can catch on with this one. Go back and check it out. Watch another one. Uh, watch it again. Sometimes just watch it again helps you out. Thanks so much for checking out uh, Bobby's Garage with Instructor Beats today. You can always follow us on Instagram at, at Instructor Beats. Please check out our other ratio playlist videos and our ratio song and everything else we have to offer at Instructor Beats Official. As always, please subscribe. Bobby and Instructor Beats, out.